All right, the NFL trade deadline is right around the corner. It's faster than you think. It's faster than you think. It's Halloween, all right? Spooky trade deadline. And the Detroit Lions are 5-2. and two. I think everybody thinks that they're in the mix, obviously for playoffs, but also very possibly to be uh, a Super Bowl contender. Now, they're coming off a tough loss to the Ravens, so that makes it a little bit more difficult, but it also heats up the true the trade rumor mill. And so I got four targets that the Detroit Lions have been linked to, and I promise you're going to love one of them, and I save the best for the middle. I'm not going to wait, make you wait till the end, but I, I also want to get uh, the first ones out of the way early. Um, the one that I don't love as much is number one is Dante Jackson. Dante Jans Jackson is a cornerback. He plays for the Carolina Panthers. They need to be shopping people for anything and everything they can. If they, if he is not part of the plans going forward and at 27 years, um, he might not be part of the plans. He's had a down year under the new coaching staff in uh, comparison to the three years previous to that. He's not a bad player. He's not a bad player, um, but he hasn't been playing well this year, earning PFF grades of 50 overall and 55 in coverage. Some of that could be what he's playing in, but he's a guy that has great speed and could help our cornerback depth we saw how quickly it can go bad when Jerry Jacobs is not in. So that is the reason I kind of like that. Now, one thing that I always like to do with these, and I'll do this for every single player, is let you know what their contract is now, so what we'd be getting into and what it could look like going forward. So for him, he has one more year left on his contract. All right, the cap hit this year is seven and a half million. Next year, it's almost 15 million. Um, but the dead cap is 9.78. Often that guaranteed money when a player is traded, that still goes, not always perfectly, but that still goes to the other team. So we'd be paying him about six million next year, um, along with his remaining contract this year. I think it's doable. I think it's doable, but at the same time, there has to be an understanding of, is it worth it? Will he be part of this team? Because, you know, and, and but why not? Like, why not? I don't think it's a bad move, and it would probably only cost you like a fifth round pick. All right, which we say only a fifth round pick, but at the same time, we all kind of know. We kind of know what Brad Holmes does with his fifth round picks. All right, the next person that has been linked to the Lions is a wide receiver, and it is this is my second favorite one just because it's a big, flashy name, and it is Marquise Brown of the Arizona Cardinals. I like this guy. I've always liked Marquise Brown. He played his first uh, few years in Baltimore with the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, his first three years in the last two, he's been at Arizona. His best year was 2021 where he had 91 catches for 1,000 yards. He's able to play in the slot. He's able to take the um, top off of a defense. He has elite speed. He was a number one pick. Um, he was a number one pick for Baltimore, uh, a first-round pick, pick number 25. And here is kind of what the contract breakdown looks like for him. He is currently in the final year of his I mean, it, it was the final of his year of his contract, basically of his rookie contract, but he's getting 13 million to play with the Cardinals this year. I would say, you know, that's not a horrible deal for him. It's not great. He's been playing. Okay. He has some concentration drops and things like that. He knows how to get open. And he's one of those guys where you're asking yourself and you're thinking to yourself is Jamison Williams it. And if you're thinking that might, he, he might be, he might be it. But if he's not it this year and you want to win a Super Bowl this year, you need to have a guy that you can consistently run on the field that you can trust. Uh, Marquise Brown would be good enough to do this. I think this would be, um, oh, maybe a second round pick. Maybe. Um, maybe a third round pick. So, like, if you could get him for a third round pick, I'd say probably go for it. But is it worth the the, the tag? You know, just the quick third round pick. So, um, yeah, that's just kind of my thought. I don't, I don't know. Tell me what you think for all these guys at the cost. So, I'm going to give you every player and cost. Who do you think is the most valuable? All right, is it um, is it Jackson at a fifth round pick? Is it 
um, Marquise Brown at a second or third round pick? Um, or is it our next guy? And the next guy is the one that I think you are going to like the most. It is Brian Burns edge for the Carolina Panthers. They're Owen six. They have to be selling. If a guy is not part of their future plans, they need to be getting rid of him. That is the state that their offense is in. So is he part of their future plans? Well, here's the contract details on Burns. He is in the final year. This is the big payout year, the franchise tag year, the whatever you want to call it year that he's getting $16 million a year. If they keep him another year, if they keep him another year, it would either be franchise tagging him or it would be paying him his money over three or four years. So Spotrack does this really cool thing called a market value. And they're saying his market value would be a five-year deal worth $117,000. In other words, $23.4 million a year. We'd have him this year, but then we would have the full force. So is Brian Burns a guy that you would want to pay that kind of money for? Because I don't think you spend a first round pick because he'd probably cost a first round pick, maybe a second or like a second and a fifth or, you know, a second and a player. Maybe you send over a second and a Julian Okwara or you send over, like somebody that could help them in their team now. Um, and, and here's the thing. Here's what he has been. Uh, he has been a guy that does well. Here's his sack numbers from rookie year to now. Eight, 10, nine, 13. And this year he has five sacks already. He is 25 years old. Can you imagine when we were playing against the Ravens, what was the struggle? I mean, you could say there was a lot of struggles, but I think the biggest struggle is that we didn't think we could get home against Lamar. So we didn't think we could get home against Lamar. So what we did was we played back in coverage. That's why we have trouble with running quarterbacks. Like, what are we going to do? What is this going to look like? And then he ended up running all over us. He ended up, Throwing. I don't know why I said running. He ended up throwing all over us because we just sat back and let him throw. Same thing happens. That's how we played um, Mahomes, and that wouldn't work again. Like, that's how we had to play Geno Smith. That's not going to work. So, if we have two elite edge rushers, who can stop that? I like this move. I say go for it. We, we're not a team that swings big. We're just, we haven't been a team that swings big in the past. And I would love for us to swing big again. Uh, just, just, just do it. Why not? All right. The last one is the son of Patrick Sertan, Sertain, whatever you want to call him. And it's Patrick Sertain the second. Um, this is a little bit of a bigger get. He's younger than um, Jackson, Dante Jackson, but he's, he's a good player. Honestly, he's played better. He's only 23 years old. He was a first-round pick. You need to give up a first-round pick for him. So the question you have to ask yourself is, do you want a guy who is going to cost you a first-round pick? Do you think he's been a good enough corner at the age that he's at to get a first-round pick? All right, so let's see. Let's see what he's at. We would have him next year for a very inexpensive price, and then we get to decide if we want to keep him. It's really that simple. And he would be paid after that. But you'd have him this year and next year at an inexpensive rate. And then the rookie accelerator would bring him up to probably somewhere, depending on if he continues to play well in that 12, 13, 14 million dollar range. We went through all this with Jeff Okuda. Like, are we going to want to do that? And it might even be too late to do that already um, to make that call. You might have to do that after the second year, but I'm not sure. So I don't I don't know all the unique things here. I know he's not an unrestricted free agent until 2026. There is rights to keep him in 2025. So we could have him for this year, next year on the, ch and next year on the cheap. And then he would get more expensive after that. Um, you just have to decide if that's a position that you want more. So I think what I would be saying to this is there are two players that I really like. And I think the first one is Brian Burns. I think a consistent, solid pass rush makes a better defense more so than a good corner. Um, and then I would go, I like uh, the Marquise, Marquise Brown one because why not? 
Why not? And then uh, I don't I don't really care which corner, but I would rather have one that's playing well uh, than one that is starting to fall off. So I think Patrick Sertain might be the better bet, but I don't know if I'd be willing to give up a first round pick for him. So just have to see what uh, is wanted to do. And we'll kind of go from there. A lot of uh, a lot of Panthers, a lot of Broncos, a uh, lot of a lot of Cardinals on the trade block right now. It's not confusing. They're bad. So let me know which one do you like most and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.